Hello guys and welcome back on the channel. Today I have found uh, for you a new high win rate strategy, IMA MACD scalping strategy by Trader DNA. As always, and I say it also for the new one on this channel, I am going to backtest this strategy on years of data, but before I'm showing you some examples so you can clearly understand uh, how it works, I'm going to reveal you the real average success rate of this strategy. I will try with statistical analysis to improve it. And finally, I'm going to show you the new average success rate of the improved strategy. So let's not waste any time. I am going to backtest this strategy on these forex pairs and on the 30 minute time frame. But before we start, I remember you that if you want to know more about my software, you want to backtest your strategy or you want more info about it, write me an email that we leave in the description. So let's watch together a few examples so you can clearly understand how this strategy works. I will leave anyway the link of this video in the description so you can check it for the basic conditions. But let's see this free trade on USDCAD and USDCRF. So let's start with the one on uh, uh, USDCAD along one. So first of all, you have to put on your chart two indicators. So you search MACD is this one. And then you have to put on your chart EMA, two EMAs, so one and two clicks. And uh, you will, should see on your chart um, two EMAs, the first one with uh, uh, period 12 and the second one with period 26. So this strategy is pretty simple. All you have to do is to check for two conditions. So first of all, you have to check in the MACD that the blue line goes below above the blue line, sorry, the blue line must go above the zero line. So here it happens, uh, the blue line becomes positive. And then you have to check for at least two candles to have uh, following uh, the MACD cross. Um, the, you have to check for at least two candles that uh, uh, have their close above EMA 12 and here it happens and the EMA 12 above EMA 26. Here it happens, you can open your long position at last close, setting your stop loss to ATR 14. So you, uh, you, took your, um, you take your opening price, you subtract uh, from it ATR. ATR is in this indicator, it gives you a value for each candle. So you take ATR for this candle, so you do close minus ATR, and this will, it will be your stop price. <laughs> and the risk to reward ratio 1.1. So as you can see, now we have a successful trade. Let's see a short one. So here you have to check for the blue line to go below uh, the zero line, here it happens. Then you have to check for two candles to have their close below EMA 12 and EMA 12 must be below EMA 26. Here it happens, here it happens. You set, uh, uh, you will open your position at the last close and the stop loss will be last close minus last ATR 14. And as you can see, again, with a risk to ratio 1.1, it was a successful trade. And also, I didn't show you that, but my software told me that, all uh, as you can see, so here and here. But now let's see the trade on USD GF. So it was here, so a short one, blue line go below, goes below the zero line. EMA 12 below EMA 26, two candles below EMA 12, you can open your short position and uh, as you can see, a successful trade again. So this strategy seems very profitable at a first sight, but how it will perform over your data? Let me show you. As you can see, it almost break even and with commissions, you would have lost all your money. That's not good, that's a bad strategy. It was not profitable and it was also not statistically profitable. Here it happens, it happens sometimes, as you can see, it was not as profitable as it claimed with these settings. And uh, yeah, not good results, but the number of trades is really high. So let's not give up. Let's try with statistical analysis to improve it. So I have already downloaded all the trades on uh, of the strategy. And the first thing I found was that um, the average such as trading buy is higher than sell. It's not a big difference, but it's higher. And then what I have found, I have found that uh, 
If you have checked for a MACD crossover, so what is a MACD crossover? A bullish MACD crossover. So let's go back here. Uh, let's see a long uh, trade. So a MACD crossover, bullish MACD crossover would have been when the blue line go below the red line. So here it happens. So uh, what I have found, I have found that if you have add this condition to the strategy and you have checked for this MACD bullish crossover in the last nine plus two candles, so 11 candles, the new average success rate would have been 52%. And uh, um, yeah, that's good. And for short position, the same things was not found. As you can see, it would have performed better with uh, like it would have almost break even. But let's not take into consideration these short trades because that uh, that's uh, doesn't uh, work very well. So uh, for this video, I'm going to improve it by only using. Uh, by trades and uh, uh, I will add this condition on the MACD uh, cross of the MACD crossover. So I'm checking for MACD crossover, a bullish MACD crossover, MACD 12, 26, 26.9 because they are the default settings uh, here. So 12, 26.9. Uh, so I told my software to check for that. Uh, the cross uh, of the zero line can be above or below the zero line, but uh, by the, the setting for this strategy basically it will be only below uh, the zero line and i'm checking it in the last 11 candles so uh, my software to now know these conditions so it will try uh, it these are all the other conditions so uh, the macd uh, the cross on the macd on the zero line and um, then here we can see the close above EMA 12 and the above EMA 26 in the last two candles. It must be respected for all the candles in the last two. So as you can see here, here as you can see, there are the condition of sell of the default strategy. As you can see, here uh, it is all, there is also the open price formula, so the last close. And here it's uh, the stop loss pro formula. So uh, let's close manual last TR multiply by, by 1.5. Okay, I think uh, I showed you all the things uh, you should uh, see. Uh, and now let's try to run again the strategy, again on the train dataset, and let's see how it performs. Okay, as you can see, uh, we have a new average success rate, 52%. It's uh, slightly higher than before because new positions were opened, so that's good. And um, yeah, it's uh, it works pretty well, as you can see, 52 percent. It does. It was not profitable with commissions, but in like a three years of data, it, this strategy would have been able to uh, double your account. So that sounds good for a one to one. The number of trades is pretty high, not so high. It was not statistically profitable. That's uh, it's an important condition to bear in mind. So maybe uh, you can you I this uh, statistically profitable doesn't mean you will not lose money, but you are pretty sure that it is true. It is profitable uh, at ninety five percent sureness. So uh, you are sure that your average success rate is in this interval. So as you can see, this interval uh, doesn't go past the average success rate to break even. So uh, that's not good. Uh, let's see other information about these strategies uh, because um, some of you asked me to sh hey, show me other informations and I'm going to show you uh, surely because it's important to know uh, other information about this strategy or other strategies that I backtest. So uh, for example, let me show you the max success in a row 12, the max fail in a row 11. So uh, we have more phase in a row. Uh, we have more phase in a row data than such as in a row, and uh, here are more other information like the leverage I used. I will apply the commission so dynamic based on buy power, um, spread commission for lot rounded, and uh, other information as you can see. The here we have swaps commission forex for night. And as you can see, here are the swap commissions I found on the internet, the, 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 most, uh, uh, the most common. Um, here, for example, we can see that I used all the buying power needed and the minimum buying power was zero. 
So uh, here is a fraction of buying power. So I, the buying power goes from zero to 50,000 uh, 50, in this case. Uh, and here are other information about this strategy. So um, I can take only one trade at a time for symbol. It's, uh, it was not disabled. And uh, here are other information. So as you can see, uh, these are the result. So let's try to run uh, the strategy on the test data set and let's see how it performs. So let's run again. Okay, as you can see, the average success rate uh, doesn't go past the average success rate to break even. You would have lost, uh, uh, you would have almost uh, go break, you would have not lost so many money without the commission, but we commission not good result. And also, um, yeah, we can see that uh, the lower confidence interval uh, is, uh, sorry, the average success rate uh, is in the confidence interval we have, we have found before. So our confidence interval works, uh, so this is pretty good. And um, yeah, so it, it probably there was some overfitting, uh, or probably not, uh, or probably the MACD cross uh, is not the best, uh, um, the best condition to adopt this strategy. Maybe it's also that. Uh, but uh, I think uh, that uh, for this video, it's pretty everything. Uh, I told you uh, everything I found. So before ending the video, I remind you that I'm not a financial advisor. So that must be clear. These are not financial advices uh, and trading is very dangerous. I'm not responsible of any use of the strategy and the strategy may not perform well in the future like it did in the past. Pay attention for trading is very dangerous. But uh, if you enjoyed this content, I remind you to leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment if you want. And um, yeah, let's see you in the next video. Bye.